Hello, I am Professor Stephen Abbott. Welcome to this RSC lockdown launch event for my new book, Sticking Together, The Science of Adhesion. I'm told that for a book launch, you need a few things. First, a glitzy venue. Well, I'm sorry about that, but all you've got is my office. Second, you need the book. Here it is, and it's available at all good online bookstores. Third, there has to be a book signing event. Here goes. Signed. Fourth, there has to be a toast. To the author, to the book, and those who made it possible. So can my graphics editor, Mark Abbott, my style critic, Sebastian Abbott, my video assistant, Ella Abbott, and my editors at the RSC, Drew Williams and Katie Mori raise a non-alcoholic glass cheers. and say cheers. cheers. Fifth, the author would normally mingle with the crowd and answer your questions about adhesion science. As that's not possible, here are some of the questions you might have asked and some answers which can be explored more fully in the book itself. So, to our first question, what's the oldest known glue and what was it used for? I'm not an historian, so I'm not going to try to answer the exact question. Instead, I can say that we have examples of Neanderthal and early human glue used for the important task of sticking arrow points onto arrows. This was an important technological breakthrough. If you got it right, you and your tribe could eat well. If not, you might starve. And it's surprisingly difficult. You take some birch bark and heat it till it forms a tar. How you do that is described in the book. But here's the problem. If it's too soft, it's nice and sticky, but the arrowhead will just slide off when it hits the target. If it's too hard, it will stick well, but the glue will shatter on impact so the head won't penetrate into the animal. It has to be just right, probably mixed with some carbon black nanoparticles from a fire. This problem of glues being sticky but too soft, or hard but too brittle, is one common to all adhesives. Next question. How can I stick things with no glue? It's easy. Everything sticks to everything if it makes perfect contact. My grandson Joseph will show us how his toy figure can stick without any glue, just from nice contact between smooth cling film and smooth glass. There are two problems with this sort of adhesion. The first is that it works in some directions and not in others. In the main part of Joseph's video, the figure was applying shear forces, but right at the end we see the figure fall as the angle was increased to provide peel forces. We can show this even more strongly when we compare pure butt adhesion with peel adhesion. This is a video I made many years ago to prove the point. So, two men pulling as strong as we can. <laughs> okay, we can't do it. Okay, Anna, can you just pull it apart? Just pull at the edges. Without well, any effort. And just pull the part. So, two men pulling as strong as we can. <laughs> okay, we can't do it. Okay, Anna, can you just pull this part? Just pull at the edges. And without any effort, and just pull the part. There we go. The second problem is that small bits of dirt can get in the way. With a little sprinkle of salt, Joseph's toy doesn't stick at all. If you are a gecko, you can use two tricks to be able to walk up a wall with no glue. First, you make good contact with the rough wall using a clever set of structures in your feet. Second, you make sure you resist adhesion via shear forces, 
but when you want to unstick, you flick your foot to peel it off. Everyone talks about gecko adhesion, but what they forget is that geckos don't want to remain stuck in one place forever. They must be able to walk. So geckos use this no glue adhesion in a smart manner, flipping from strong to weak adhesion at a flick of a wrist. Now one of the important questions. How can I stop ketchup sticking to the inside of my bottle? As we saw with the toy figure, everything sticks to everything if they make good contact. So the ketchup sticks to the wall of the bottle, or in this case, the glass slide. Because we don't like runny ketchup, the ketchup is tangled up with itself to make it thick and viscous. So the ketchup stuck to the wall is stuck to the next layer of ketchup, which is stuck to the next layer and so on. As I tilt the glass, you see that it really doesn't want to slide very easily. Now it's starting to slide at quite a high angle. If we bash the bottle, I won't do that uh, over my laptop, we impose a sudden shock, a bit like the gecko flicking its wrist. If we don't want to do that, the only thing we can do is make the wall of the bottle a liquid, because adhesion of liquid to liquid is low. If the wall is like a silicone release paper, then it is semi-liquid, so flow is easier. But that's not possible for a typical ketchup bottle. So another way is to trap an immiscible liquid onto the surface of the wall. Here we see one example taken from the patent literature. You spray the inside of the bottle with a rough coating of Carnauba wax, then coat that with some natural oil like ethyl oleate, which is immiscible with the ketchup, and the ketchup will slide along on the layer of oil. Here's a question you were all wanting to ask. How can spaghetti help me understand the science of adhesion? To answer it, we now go to Germany to our expert spaghetti chefs, Ella and Emily. Hello, I've got some spaghetti. Let's tangle it. My spaghetti is too long. Yummy, lots of spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy spaghetti. Oh. Our ketchup was thick and viscous because there were tangles inside it. Tangles are everywhere and are a powerful force of resistance. A good adhesive is one that is nicely tangled. This means that if you try to unstick one part, the other parts get involved, so you spread the load and resist breaking the joint. Cheers! On a desert island, what one adhesive would you take with you? If it had to be a tube of adhesive, then I'd be tempted by superglue. It's not especially super, for reasons discussed later and in the book. For all round general adhesion, it's impressive. However, I'd probably choose one of those solvent-based general purpose adhesives. Superglue is great if you have clean parts to join together but it's poor when you have more typical rough surfaces. The solvent-based glues have time to flow into all the rough parts, and although they don't give a very strong bond, they give a tough bond. And if they start to come apart, you can squash them back together. But for general survival and a choice of any adhesive, it's no contest. I'd have lots of rolls of tape named after strong apes or dinosaurs. These are pressure sensitive adhesive tapes. And the funny thing about them is that they work because the adhesive is weak, not strong. I can show this with classic duct tape. They have to be weak in order to flow into contact with the surface, as they are doing as I touch the surface with my finger. You can hear it being tacky and sticky. If you took a roll of this tape 
and use it in the Antarctic, it wouldn't work because the adhesive becomes stronger, which means that it won't flow into contact with the surface, so it won't be able to stick. If there were no scissors on the desert island, then I would use duct tape because it's easily torn, which is a problem in some situations, as we'll see shortly. If I had scissors, then I'd use one of these super strong tapes. Now there's a problem with these. If these tapes stick strongly to everything, and they do, how can you unwind them from their roll? The answer is with difficulty, if you do it slowly, and easily, if you do it quickly. The tapes have a special pattern on their back which makes this possible. It doesn't show up on my webcam, so here's a little clip from the Strong Tape video on the YouTube channel. There's another problem with these tapes. If they stick so well to everything, how do you release the tape from the roll? The answer is you have to have defects built into the back of the tape. And as you can see, there are little holes, patterned holes, in the back of this tape. And that reduces the adhesion because of cracks between the tape and the back of the tape. Could I really take someone hostage with duct tape? Here's a video I prepared earlier. Warning, I'm a highly trained scientist. Please do not try this at home. My able assistant, Ella, armed with classic duct tape, is going to take me hostage. Here we go. Not my hands, please. And please, not my mouth. Oh no! So the first thing is, duct tape doesn't stick to mouths. So I can shout to help now, help, help. But also, it's not very strong. So my legs are free instantly, and my hands also. So the message is, if you're going to take someone hostage, don't use duct tape. If nothing sticks to Teflon, how does Teflon stick to a pan? So nothing sticks to Teflon, Here's Joseph again, showing that adhesive tapes have no problem sticking to it. Still, Teflon is designed so that nothing reacts chemically with it during cooking, nor can it get tangled up with the surface in order to stick. So Teflon is certainly non-stick in general use. So again, if most things don't stick to it, how does it stick to the pan? There's no mystery. To stick the Teflon to the pan, you just need very high temperatures that create a few chemical bonds between the metal and the polymer. As explained in the book, just a few chemical bonds across an interface are all you need for strong adhesion. Is it okay to bungee jump off a bridge using superglue? Unfortunately, my attempts to create a video to answer the question failed through lack of volunteers. So here's a repeat of the diagram with the three ways to pull apart a joint. Superglue is very bad in peel and also bad in shear. So attaching your bungee cord via peel or shear would be a disaster. In butt mode, superglue is effective provided you do two more things you always see in the videos. First, use the glue between highly polished metal blocks and second, use 10 small drops instead of one large drop. These two tricks provide a super thin, even layer of glue that provides the highest possible strength. Which brings us to the next question. Why do heroic demos of super glue use 10 drops of glue and not just one large blob? When I started writing the book, I had no intention of telling the readers about Stefan's squeeze law. 
Then I found that a lot of what goes on in the world of adhesives makes no sense without it. So here's the simple version. The more you squeeze, the harder it gets. When you first squeeze the drop at the centre, it expands easily, but it gets harder and harder with no chance of filling the whole joint. To fill a joint more reliably, it's better to apply multiple small drops rather than one drop of the same volume. Here's a demo showing the effect, taken from the book's YouTube channel. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six drops each of adhesive. Well, not really, it's English custard because it's viscous, safe and easy to clean. And I want to illustrate Stefan's squeeze law, which says that if you're going to apply adhesive, it's better to do it as small drops rather than the same volume in one large drop. Let's try that for real. I'll put on the adhesive. And we see that the areas of these small drops are fairly large and the colour is very light because it's very thin. The area of the central drop is large, of course, because there was more originally, but the total area is less than the sum of the area of the six drops around. And this is a general principle for adhesion, whether you're doing dot and dab, putting plaster onto wall, doing buttercream icing in cakes, or doing those adverts where you apply 10 drops of super glue onto a highly polished metal surface rather than one large drop. This is the way to get the most adhesion out of your adhesive by following Stefan's squeeze law. So that's why all the online videos showing super glue being used for bungee jumping or for lifting a pickup truck start with 10 drops plus the super smooth metal so the thinnest possible layer of glue gives perfect contact with the strongest adhesion and shock resistance. Is adhesion just about glues? Not at all. In the book, we look at many other aspects of adhesion. There's the sintering of ceramic particles to produce anything from cups and saucers to aircraft engine turbine blades. There's the bonding of cement particles in concrete and in holding brick walls together. There's the challenge of strong fixings of heavy loads. Mechanical strength of the things you're adhering is often as important as the glue you're sticking them with. Your UV light cure dental fillings are a 30 year story of how to go from okay to great. And the wonders of 3D printing contain a lot of compromises around the science of adhesion. How biological systems stick together is a whole story not so much about adhesives as about adhesive systems. Other aspects not shown here are how paints adhere to walls, how metals are held together by soldering, welding or brazing, and specialist activities like sticking tiles to walls. With so much diversity, you might think that it's all very complicated. But when you read the book, you'll find that a few key principles explain why adhesion works, and why things go wrong if you don't follow the science. Our final question. What's the best glue for my specific job? All through the book, you find that adhesion is a property of the system. This isn't some glib statement. It's a deep insight into the nature of how adhesion works. Often the choice of adhesive is less important than thinking about the system itself. So to find the best adhesive, you have to understand the system. And the good news is that for each job, the expert is you. You see, I wanted the book to be fun and interesting and informative, of course, but I also wanted it to be useful. Once you realize that you are the expert on your system, you can work out which sort of adhesive system will be right for the job. You can choose to be quick and dirty or slow and careful to make a joint that will last a lifetime or one you can take apart anytime you need to. Finally, thank you for joining my book launch party. 
You can explore more ideas in the book's YouTube channel and on my Practical Adhesion website, which has a lot of the science captured as apps. Writing this book has been an enjoyable adventure for me. I hope you'll also enjoy getting to know the science of sticking together. Goodbye.